In the next few videos, we're going to discuss the theoretical approaches in sociology. This video is going to cover macrosociology versus microsociology and functionalism. Macrosociology and microsociology are two different perspectives for studying society. Macrosociology takes the big picture view of society and focuses on topics such as social institutions. Social institutions are patterns of social relationships, and examples include the legal system, religion, family, and education. What macrosociologists try to do is explain how these large-scale social forces affect society and individuals. And a couple examples of questions that macrosociologists would try to study are how does the prevalence of religion affect crime rate? And how does the state of the national economy affect crime rates? So essentially taking a big picture view to study crime. Microsociology is essentially the opposite of macrosociology. Instead of taking the big picture view, microsociologists focuses on individual interactions. So what microsociologists try to do is to explain how people interact as well as the meaning of those interactions. An example of a question that microsociologists would ask is, why did an individual commit a crime? So what you can see is that macrosociologists and microsociologists can study the same topic, in this case crime, but they are taking different perspectives to study these topics and often they're addressing different questions. Now, for both macrosociology and microsociology, there are a number of different types of each theory. Functionalism is an example of a macrosociological theory. Emile Durkheim is considered the founder of functionalism and is a name that you should have memorized and be able to associate with functionalism for the exam. Emile Durkheim essentially proposed that society is like a living organism that has social institutions that perform important functions and work together to ensure social stability. So this is like an organism with many organs. Each organ performs a different function that is important for survival, and together these different organs work together to allow the organism to survive. Now, in terms of functions, there are two different types, manifest functions and latent functions. Manifest functions are the intended functions of social institutions. So if we're considering education as an example of a social institution, we can say that one of the manifest functions of education is to increase the knowledge of the citizens to prepare them to enter the workforce. Latent functions are in unintended functions of a social institution. So again, with education, one of its latent functions is to increase income inequality. Okay, now functionalism has a number of cons and critiques. The first is that it is unable to explain social changes because it focuses on social equilibrium. And as a result of the fact that it focuses on social equilibrium, functionalism tends to favor the status quo and maintain inequalities in society. And finally, functionalism does not account for conflicts. And during the time that functionalism was being developed, there was revolutions going on where there were substantial social changes occurring quickly. So these are some of the cons for functionalism. And because it doesn't account for conflicts, functionalism is sometimes also called consensus theory. In subsequent videos, we're going to discuss one of the theories that essentially arose due to these shortcomings of functionalism. And one of those theories is conflict theory.